Man, so we're in the Philippines, buddy. Like, we've been in the Philippines. We've been in the Philippines for yeah. a week now. A week and a day? Yeah, it's been a week and a day. So we left. Um, we were supposed to leave on Wednesday. The Was it September 30th? Something like that. When, Whenever Hurricane Ian, Ian right. hit Florida was when we were supposed to leave. Yeah. That pushed us back. You're a madman, and we're like, we'll go Saturday. <laughs> we'll go, yeah, we're not. <laughs> You're like, we were, we're not to, waiting. We were supposed to leave Wednesday, and then the soonest we could get out was Saturday. And I was like, yes, we'll do that. Sure. But it was a much, much longer flight. It was originally supposed to be 24 hours. And then we had that 12 hour layover in what Tokyo. Was what was that airport? Hanada in? Airport. Hanada. Yeah. And uh, that was fine. Was it fun. actually went better than I thought it would go. Yeah. Um, I figured like the first four hours would be sweet and then we'd just be miserable. But we got a good nap in. It was, was fun. fun. Uh, Japan Air, much like ANA, amazing flights, great food. Oh, uh, Japan Air's amazing. The food on yeah. those flights. Oh. oh my God. Three meals that don't suck. Perfect. Love so good. <laughs> so good. So then we, we made it after 36 hours of traveling, we landed in Manila. And had an opportunity to stay in, well, we went right to Makati. Yeah. Um, in an area that, unbeknownst to us, was actually like the party area. Yeah. And we ended up staying at the party hotel. Because one of the challenges that uh, we had getting out is that you have to book your hotel. Um, so when you pass through Customs Immigration here in Manila, they ask you where you're staying and when your return flight is. So you obviously have to have a return flight home. And like most places, they want to know where you're going to stay. So we had to book a hotel. But the problem was is that the hotel that we booked was non-refundable, and we couldn't get our flight to be there until Saturday, and we were supposed to be there on Thursday. So that was kind of a whole nightmare. It worked out okay. We just told them we were going to where we were going. It totally worked out. And luckily, it wasn't a super expensive hotel. And then we ended up at the Makati Palace Hotel. Yeah, which... Uh... I mean, I, I think the, the phrase red light district gets thrown around a little bit for that area. Yes. Um, it, was, it was a wild time. It was, it was certainly interesting for me. I'd never been really in an area like that. Uh, uh, as we had already just checked in the Makati Hotel, we started looking at the people around and the surrounding bars and areas and who was hanging out there. And then we started looking it up. I was like, oh, wow, this is, we're right in the heart of it. And then from there, uh, we realized pretty quickly that Manila wasn't for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, Nothing really bad to say about Manila, but it's very New York. It's it's a big city. Mm. There are places in Manila that feel like you're just like somewhere in Manhattan. Uh, so we decided to truck down to Cebu City after that, right? That's right. Yeah, Cebu City, um, which was a flight for us. So as soon as we had our 36 hours of travel, we essentially stayed in Makati for one night, and then we booked a flight for the next day, and then flew into Cebu City and then went to Lapu Lapu. Lapu Lapu, yeah, so it was, uh, in the last video you saw it was his birthday. We stayed at this Ducet, like, really solid resort. Um, almost unfortunate that there wasn't a ton of people there, um, but there was, it was kind of nice that we had like a lot of it to ourselves in the, same, in the same regard, it was cool. I think we both learned very quickly, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is also not what we were looking for. <laughs> But it was good, and then we decided to go right into like what the the business district area of Cebu City. The next yeah, night. yeah, yeah. We did. Well, we walked. Did we walk something like eight miles that day? Yeah, just over eight miles. Yeah. So we we walked, and we didn't know where we were going. And you know, some of the walks that I've done, say in Nicaragua or Costa Rica, like you get to a certain neighborhood, and you kind of start to feel unsafe, yeah. candidly. Um, but here. I, I, I never I don't know about you, but I never once felt that way. Never once. No, I mean, obviously people were like, who are these two giant American men? But like yes. outside of that, I, I definitely never felt like put off even. No. Which was surprised. Like I get more mean mugs in New York all day long than I ever have walking around. Like to be completely clear, like some, some pretty poor areas of Cebu City, they're beautiful still, but they're really poor and we're just like kind of in people's space. And uh, there were still hellos. I think I think the amount of children who want to say hi and oh, yeah. and like they're just like stoked to see us yeah. just because they're like these different giant people. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they all think I play for the NBA. Well, wait, some of them I know. So so if you don't know, <laughs> my friend Corey here is six foot nine. It was what is that in centimeters? For two hundred and five centimeters. Two hundred five and a half. Now I'm six two on a good day. And so the average Filipino, I want to say, is five foot four, maybe five six. I'd say like maybe. close to five six, five, five seven. Six, when okay. you're talking like men, yeah, right? Yeah. So they don't see. Well, number one, we've learned they don't see too many Americans here 
um, at least from what we've gathered. Only a um, few that we've seen. Right, only a few, a handful of Americans. I mean, literally, it's halfway around the world. We're 12 time zones, 12 hour time zones away from where we live. So, I mean, it's halfway around the world for us. So it's, it's an effort to get here. So yeah, there's just not too many Americans. So that plus my guy here, six foot nine. So everybody looks at him. And also something we found out, they're a big fan of the Miami. The Miami Heat. So the coach of the Miami Heat, and maybe I can't remember his name. Maybe. Right, right off the top of my head. Right, but, but yeah, he, uh, he brought him to the championship. Like they really, really like this guy. Uh, our buddy at this shop was telling us like when the Miami Heat would be playing, the street would be empty in Shargao because everybody would be inside watching yeah, basketball, right. which is crazy to me, but wild. Unbelievable. Wild. Yeah, yeah. this is really cool. So they liked basketball for it before. I think they really love it now just yeah, because he's coach of the sure. Miami Heat. So if you ask anyone here, um, or they ask you where you're from, and they'll be, oh, are you close to Miami? And truthfully, we are close to Miami. We're only six hours north of Miami. I digress. So people, like Filipinos are known for kind of staring anyways, but they really stare at yeah. Corey. And on that particular day, we, we, we walked eight miles up through um, Cebu IT, IT Park or IT Center, yeah. it's called, and then we landed upon this what I would recognize as almost being a fair where they had vendors set yeah, up. Yeah, so and it was right. it was called a mercado. A mercado, right. So yeah. like it was the this I think the Segbo Mercado and it was just like honestly I don't know like forty really solid like really food vendors. <laughs> almost every single one of them had like legit food. Uh, the one that we didn't try but found very funny was there was, like, a lasagna stand. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> like, legit Italian lasagna, yeah. like, eight different kinds. That was nuts. Um, I've had the best chicken sandwich I think I've ever had uh, outside of Non Burger at this place. That was nuts. Totally agree. Those were amazing. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. The, we tried a few different, uh, you know, some pork. It was in the last video, that Mercado. That was amazing. Yeah, that was really good. Um, you know, I... I'm reluctant to just talk about how cheap everything is because I don't want to like, I don't want to bring like cheapness into the conversation because like the cost of things is lower. Almost nothing I have that I've had here felt cheap. We got a pupper rolling There's through. A pupper. <laughs> yeah. Hey, pupper. Maybe some spots that we we looked at to stay at that we weren't super into or whatever were like okay yeah and like worth their value comparatively on the island but like i wouldn't call anything like thrifty and cheap no well you just said the word that i was thinking of which is value yeah and, and for me something is not always worth what it costs and here i never really feel let down by the food or the accommodations yeah. or the service uh it's just, there's just a lot of value yeah. here which which i can really appreciate yeah i wouldn't i agree with you i wouldn't say things are much cheaper um, it can be, yeah. if you're really trying to be thrifty about things, um, it, it can be a lot less expensive. But If you want to do it yeah. super inexpensively, <laughs> you can. It's to be done. But yeah. like, oh, we could probably have our cost yeah. basis here, but you know, we're big guys. We eat a lot more than normal people on a couple of nights where yeah. we went out to parties. We drink a little yeah. bit more than other people. You know what I mean? So like it's. It is what it is. Sure. And we've met some locals and we're very, you know, we like to have a good time and we like to make sure the locals have a good time with yeah, us. So, for sure. you know, um, th this, this wasn't meant to be, um, you know, an, an expensive uh, trip per se yeah. for us, but it, it was certainly meant to like get the most out of um, what we could value wise. And I think we've done a pretty good job. Of it. Yeah, I'd yeah. agree. I think, I think we've done honestly remarkably well. Yeah. We've, I would almost <laughs> venture to say we've lucked out in a yes. lot oh, of our so a lot ways. of our experiences just like been easy. Yes, it's very true. Yeah. I mean that, that Mercado, for example, we had probably four different plates of things to eat to try the chicken yeah. sandwiches, the lechon, and oh the God. adobe the adobe adobo adobo, adobo, yeah, adobo yeah. right, which I keep I need to remember that. <laughs> so the adobo and, um, the and then we had, Premier Pro. <laughs> and then we had four of their local beer, the the, the Red Horse, yeah. which is actually really good beer. I'm opinion. a fan. Right. You can have any beer you want as long as it's a Red Horse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and I don't think we spent maybe more than ten or twelve dollars for all that. Maybe the equivalent. I think it would have just pushed like fifteen, sixteen. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it would have been it would have been just touching a thousand pesos. Okay. Which yeah. is nuts. No, it's 
Absolutely. For what we had in the in the quality of yeah. the food, it was just yeah. amazing. It was the, really good. Yeah, dude, the pork here is legendary. If you like pork, oh. <laughs> if you like pork barbecue, you will never find a place that doesn't have something you can eat. Is I've that... had like pork bao. I've yeah. had a banh mi. I've had like a bunch of Filipino breakfast. Like. Pork's everywhere. Well, is, isn't the, did we that same night go to that Lechon castle? Oh my or god, House of Lechon. House of Lechon in Jeez. Cebu City. Yeah, that was also you in that last it. video. Yeah. When I okay, I love roasted pork. Yeah. My buddy Maxwell used to do these big, like for their graduation parties and stuff, an awesome pit roast. His dad would pull out a whole pig. Mm. Always amazing. The skin, mm. amazing. You get you get pig skin, you get just like hearty, meaty, fatty pork. For nothing, like eight dollars for like a half a kilogram. No, no, not even. That was for the full like kilogram. It was eight bucks. I think we spent like four fifty USD. Unbelievable. You know, almost yeah. nothing for just like a chunk of some of the best pork oh, I've yeah. had. So but we good. also got calamari, which was quite good. Delicious. We got some pork belly, which is fine, but I, I kind of favor some Korean pork belly. It's very good, but you know. If I'm pulling hairs here, <laughs> if I'm pulling hairs, it's only pulling hairs. And then, uh, what's the other? oh, we got a tuna, like a tuna steak. Oh, that was Like delicious. a really meaty yeah, tuna was, steak. We got amazing. all of that for less than a thousand. Yeah, heck yeah. Absolutely. I think my beer pushed it over the top. Yep. Was, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, that's wild. That was so good. Oh, and by the way, we have to touch on this. We're covering a lot here. But we have to touch on the malls for just a minute. <laughs> In, when I say I, mean, I have never been <laughs> lost Anywhere in my life, as much as I've been in the mall in both Manila and in Cebu, wow. lost, full lost. And we thought the mall in Cebu would be smaller, and it no, wasn't. It no was chance. larger. The Ayala Centers. Oh, my goodness. And they're just, they have everything. And so we're dumb. We were like, how does a mall not have a map? They have their own Google Maps for the malls. Right, in an app on your phone. It, which made sense after yes. we thought about it because trying to update a big kiosk thing is stupid and super archaic, <laughs> but, it, but that, you need it. You four, need an what, app. Was there five floor, four, four floors? Four. Just as big as any mall that I've ever yeah. seen in America. And there was one huge one in Manila and then another huge one in Cebu. We logged 21 flights of stairs on my fitness app. It's the day we went to the mall. <laughs> it is really unbelievable. But anyway, so we'll, we'll, I would like to cover the malls a little more in depth later, later yeah, when yeah. we go back to the mainland. For sure. Um, so we um, so we finished up dinner, and then was did we go to Bamboozers that night? Yeah. Well, we have to. T okay, so we have to talk about this place, Bamboozers, for a minute, because we we no wait. So what was the place in the mall that we went to that was just kind of it was bombarded by expats? Oh, it was a. Uh... Was it called the social? I think yes, a hundred percent. It was called the social, and yeah. and it was good. It was and the great. drinks were cheap. Yeah, and it was like uh, inside outside. So like if you walked outward, you were outside yeah. undercover. Um, it was it was awesome, and we went there a couple of times because it was in the mall and it was yeah. convenient yeah. and it was uh, in a nice spot. Uh, but yeah, there was the second time we went there. The first time there was a couple of expats. We were like, okay, this is where like a lot of the guys come. Yeah, but then the second time we showed up, it was like. We went, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Expatville. Right. Guys are finding dates and stuff here. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 A, 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 100%. Um, so that was, yeah, in the big mall, the, the social. So if you're in Cebu City and you're looking to go find expats to hang out with and visit, go there. It's called, called the social again. Um, you'll definitely find what you're looking for there. And candidly, there's some very pretty girls that, that go through that place. So, so that's always an option for you. But I, I'm going to go back to something that, that you said for a minute about the Dasutani on Lapu Lapu and, and this and about it being um, uh, what we do and what we don't want to do sure. on this channel. And for me, those were two very clarifying moments. Yeah. For yeah. me, and, and I, I think they were for you too, because we were having we explicitly about spoke about it yeah. both times. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. So, does it, Donnie? Was so I've been to all inclusive weddings in in the past. Like I'm sure a lot of you have, you know, Cozumel, Cancun, different places like this, and that's what the Dasutani felt like. And to me, that's what somebody does when they're on vacation. They're working um, nine to five, um, which is great. I've I've done it. That's been most of my life. And then you go on vacation and you want just the best of everything and great service. That's what that place felt like. Yeah. Um, and there's a time and a place and I do appreciate that. Um, and then we go to the social and then there's more expats there than there was locals. And I think I realized in those moments that 
you know, I, I knew it before, um, but it was really solidified for me in those places that I just don't want this to be a channel like every other tourist channel of what to do, what not to do, right. where to go, what not to go, what are the fancy places. Like, no, I want to meet the locals and I want to have local experiences. And yeah. I kind of think that's where you're at with things too. Totally. I'd like to see how, like, how far someone, uh, to be completely fair, you can go read my blog. This is my second time out of America. I've, I went to Japan for eight days once. This is my first time out of America. And for somebody like me, it's a learning experience every single day, all day long. So it's, it's really incredible, but I'd like to see how far somebody who's relatively unexperienced can push because everybody here is so incredible. Yeah. Like they have, they have one thing to do. They're trying to just live their lives. They have so much to offer and they live in one of the most spectacular places I, I'll probably ever see in my life. <laughs> it's true. Truly, it's, it's incredible. True. It really is true. And I am, I'm, I'm excited to, to be able to push those boundaries and and show that like people all over the world are just, again, they're just humans living their lives. Mm -hmm. And I want to experience that because it's, it's so like, I don't want to use like paradigm shifting and like completely perspective altering, but it is man, like is. every day, not once, not twice, but like several times a day, I'm like, wow. You're out. And it's, it's truly mind blowing. It is, it is. And I want to do a deeper dive on this at some yeah. point, I really do. Cause it's very profound for me. Um, I've done some travel. I've lived in the United States, obviously, most of my life. I was part of the United States military, um, so I have deep roots in the United States. And um, I would love to really kind of do, again, a deeper dive about the United States, the other places that I've visited, and in, 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 in here, because it really is very different on this side of the world. Yeah. Yeah, in, in, in such a good way that it really deserves a lot more time than we can give it totally, right now. Totally, absolutely. Yeah. No shot. Yeah. So, so. So back to the ketchup, we did bamboozers and I really want to know your take on bamboozers because this was just the wildest night I think you and I have probably ever had together. All right, so the tide was coming up. I got my boots out. He was in flip-flops because he's a G and has flip-flops. I'm stupid and don't. Uh, yeah, so where were we? Uh, so we went to this place called, yeah, we just don't know if it's called Bamboozers or Bamboozlers, but there we were. <laughs> I like Bamboozlers. Right. So we walked up to the IT park, we went to the Mercado, and then we went to the social, and then we asked some people, where, sh where should we go? And we were recommended this place. We go there, and I don't know if you remember, but we bumped into a guy that we met at the pool earlier that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a guy there from Maryland. Um, he kind of gave us like the, the TLDR, the, this is kind of what these spots around this area are like. Yeah. And we went, okay, well, sounds like this is the spot for us then. And he went, yeah, I think you guys like it. What had happened next was great. So this particular bar does, how do you, how do you want to preface this? So, and I think I'll, more bars should consider doing this. This is really fun. Like this is legitimately a bar that you could go to by yourself and you're pretty much guaranteed a fun time because number one, they have these girls there that, I mean, I would say are nine out of 10 on, the, on any scale, um, but for Filipinos, they're absolutely gorgeous. And they kind of walk around the bar in a very non-sleazy way, yeah. you'd agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right, and their whole job is just to make sure that you're having a good time and yes, they will get you to buy drinks and whatnot. Uh, but it's just, it's part of the fun. It's yeah. part of the fun. It's our job. And what was, yeah. I mean, I was there, we had to be sitting there for 15 minutes before they said like, do you want to listen to music? And I started to write down a couple of songs. They saw me write down Donza Caduro and then a, a K-pop song. And one of the girls, Dulce said, oh, you like twice. Yeah. And she was like, you, sh you can just go play music. So then I DJ'd like the rest of the night, which was insane. Uh, yeah, I could play whatever I want. People came and went the whole night. It was wonderful. So he tucked into the DJ booth, which was <laughs> fantastic because we had fantastic music going all night long. And I sat there and talked to the girls and it, it, was, it was great. They didn't want anything other than just to kind of make sure that we were having a good time. And yes, maybe buy a couple of drinks. One of the things that was really shocking to me is these girls work till 4 a.m. Yeah, we, we got there at about, I'd say like 9 p.m., yeah. 9.30 max. And I think we stayed until like midnight, 12.30. Yeah, and, and we easily had two to three shots with these girls and they're all of 
I mean, this big, maybe like half our size yeah. of that. And we went there early. We had maybe two or three drinks and I watched them pour the Jaeger. So it's not like they were doing the old strip club thing where they would pour two good ones for us and then they were doing whatever, they like fake alcohol. Drinks. No, they were doing drinks until literally 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah. And then another round of guys would walk in and that's great that like, they would go to them and they make sure they're having a good time. But it was amazing. I actually thought, I thought, what a great idea. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was actually kind of sick. It was. That's dope. And I truly feel that if I was in town by myself, I could go there and I would be guaranteed to meet probably an expat or two. Um, and just with these girls, it'd be guaranteed to have a good time. So um, if you're in town, you're in Cebu, go check out. We still don't know if it's I'll put it up on the screen. or bamboozlers, but there I'll you put go. it up on the screen. It was, it was a great time. So that was our last hurrah in Cebu City. Uh, and the next day you had booked flights for us to come to Shargao. That's right. So we had got word that um, we thought that Shargao would be a great place to come because, well, A, I'm huge into wakeboarding. I, I love it. At the summer camp that we met at, I drive the boat that teaches kids how to wakeboard, water ski, wake surf, all that. So when I heard there was a brand new, well, not brand new, but uh, it hasn't been open that long, a wakeboard park, a cable park here in Shargao, I was really jazzed to go see it and, yeah. and to try it out. Matter of fact, we're going there tomorrow, uh, but that's a whole different deal. Um, but I really wanted to come here and, and Cloud9 Surf Area yeah. is here too. Which is beautiful. We, we popped by to see we what did. it looked like and like the surf breaks here are, like I'm not a surfer, he's way more of a surfer than me, but even with the little bit I know, it doesn't make any sense. It's wild. There's like multiple surf breaks in different directions and you're seeing like, people way out, like way, way yeah, beyond true. the main surf, surfing these huge, enormous, like, they gotta be what, like eight foot plus oh, they're waves. Massive. They're huge. They're yeah. massive from the land. It's on a regular day. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. And then they have these like, it goes down to for, like two to fours, which are like, you see people learning how to surf on these like two to fours over here. And you got these like, you know, three to sixes. It's kind of wild. I keep making this joke that there's like the GDP of the Philippines <laughs> was built to make this like fake artificial surf builder because it's it's unreal to look at yeah it, no, like am i wrong well they it's had a crazy. major uh surf competition here two days before right we went before to cloud we nine but uh yeah between cloud nine and the cable park there was a, just a big draw for yeah, us to come yeah. here in general because we both kind of dig the island life and and so yeah so we decided to catch a flight from cebu city which i mean the airport in cebu city compared to manila is night remarkable day. did we talk about that for a minute yeah I mean, that was so amazing. like for me like coming into <laughs> manila i can promise you if you've not done a whole lot of international travel it'll be a little anxiety ridden like it's kind mm -hmm. of it feels strict and like don't just get the first guy that wants to like get you in a taxi it's a lot it's a very very big city it's enormous by yeah. comparison to anywhere we've been Absolutely. really it's yeah, double absolutely. the size of cebu city and it's 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 really big it is it's really big. um but then you know we flew into Cebu City and it's a totally different world. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, so, I mean, the airport there is really modern. Um, it's current. It's, it's, it's not crowded at all. Um, flights were really easy to book through Philippines Airlines, which is, which is what we took from Cebu City to Chargao. And the flight was an up and down 45 minute flight. And it was beautiful. And it was the most away. beautiful yeah. flight I've ever been it's on. Unbelievable. It was like a, this super awesome prop jet. I usually knock out right when I get on a plane and it was like every minute of it, there was a new island that popped right. up. We flew under the clouds for most of the flight and it was, it was spectacular. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Like, yeah. Tell, me, tell me about your experience rolling into Shargao because we had been, uh, you know, as we said, we were, we were kind of ready to get out of the city, but like rolling up to the main island was wild. Yeah, for me. <laughs> it was, man. So. I would say back in my younger days, I was all about the city. Like I worked in Manhattan, I worked in DC, I worked in some really big cities and, and I absolutely loved it. But as I've gotten on in, I, I just, I, I truly enjoy kind of like the island life and that's kind of where I gravitate towards. And so we had been in Manila, which, which is fun. I enjoyed that and Makati and Cebu City and the IT center. But as soon as we started kind of getting into that descent dude yeah right man. when we hit the descent yeah. did like, you feel that too oh man i was getting jittery dude it was it was one of the most spectacular views i've ever seen yeah 
Yeah, so on the flight there was a very small flight, two rows one side, two rows the other. Um, he was on the seat right behind me, but we both had a window seat. And I just remember, like, we couldn't really talk to each other. When we landed, I go, did you, like, are, are you feeling that we should be here right yeah. now? <laughs> and it was, again, I, yeah. I had never been to such a small island. I've never yeah. been to Costa Rica or Nicaragua where it's, like, a little bit more, uh, I guess, like, uh, less city-esque, sure, more sure. islandy, more, you know, what would be, like, the island equivalent of rural or whatever, I guess. Yeah. But, like... I, 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 I have this image of this guy, he was in a small boat through like what looks like kind of like Everglady areas and that was the first image of getting into Shargown. Yeah. And then when we, it was like Jurassic Park for half of the oh, runway yeah, yeah. and it just looked in, incredible. Yeah, it was yeah. like, I went, holy crap. Yeah, I, I had no idea it was, that it was like this. It was beautiful. Yeah. And, and then my traveling perspective kicked in, which I, I'm trying to kick this, but it's just one of those things that I've developed over the years of traveling. And I expected that as soon as we got off the plane, yeah. right, and that we go out into the area where the, the cars and the rentals and everything's gonna be, that we're just gonna get bombarded. And it wasn't like that at all, was it? It was, no, it was like, actually really nice. There was, I mean, there was a guy that said, hey, I got motorbikes. And then there was these wonderful tourist vans that like were the least pushy that they could have been. Right. They said, hey, we take this van into General <laughs> Luna. And we went, well, that's where we're going. Right. How much? And he was like, what was it, 600 pesos? Yeah, the equivalent so, of about uh, 5 to $6 each. Yeah, so, so six for both of us. For so both. about 300 pesos for both of us. Yeah. And yeah, 45 minute drive through like deep island. Like there's yeah. like water buffalo-esque looking. <laughs> there was. <just laughs> and like goats hanging room. out. And it was like, it was, it was wild, man. It was some of the most beautiful landscape I've ever seen. Yeah. There's these huge expanses throughout the whole island and it, it takes you right into this area that we're here now. Absolutely beautiful. And it's, I mean. Yeah, so we pull into um, General Luna which is the town that we're in, which is kind of considered to be the more touristy spot in Chargao. Yeah, touristy. Right, yeah. right tur yeah, touristy is a yeah. relative term. Um, and so maybe 20 minutes to the northwest is the Chargao Wake Park, uh, which we're going to tomorrow. And then maybe 15 minutes to the north of us is Cloud9 Surf Area, um, which, which at the beginning of this video, we were just filming about five minutes north of Cloud9. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, just an absolutely beautiful area all the way around. And since we've been here, we have just kind of been getting out amongst it and yeah. getting our bearings. Um, yeah. We kind of went back and forth between, are we those guys that are going to land in Manila and just start filming yeah. from day one? And then we're going to film like every day. And we kind of were like, no, like we want to get a I, true... Yeah, like, you know, I think we settled in really nicely. Like we... I don't know, like, I guess it's been super serendipitous the whole way through. So we, we landed, it was not hard to meet people. Some of the people at the shops were incredibly generous. Our bro from this place called Brow, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's amazing. He basically told us like, hey, this is what's going on on the island tonight. Like you should go up to this party. So we saw this yeah. party. Hirana. Yeah, Hirana, the night before that, yeah. you yeah. met JP, who's yeah. this guy who's Filipino from San Francisco, who you'll see in future videos for sure. We're gonna hang out with him tomorrow yeah, as tomorrow. well. Yeah. And it was like nonstop go. We just like landed and we we're like, okay, let's not be the guys that just like put cameras in people's faces. Yeah. Let's like kind of see and feel this out. And we had two really incredible nights where like it was nothing but it was nothing but love. It was yeah. nothing but, you know, we met this woman, Camille, at this one spot. She gave us every spot we needed to see oh, all the yeah, way up north. Camille, um, it's, it's just been, it's been spectacular. It absolutely has been. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we, 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 we've just gotten here four days ago, Shargao, three days ago. I've lost track <laughs> of time already. One of those. I'm on Philippine time already. Right. And we've just met so many wonderful people, and now we're actually starting to kind of integrate. Um, with them, which is nice. And so we have just moved into our Airbnb. So we're kind of in the, the kitchen area of, of our Airbnb here, which the main street is two steps there that way. <laughs> right. And um, so we're already starting to meet people. We're going to kind of start integrating with them now. And we're going to really kind of be in the local kind of like, that's where we want to yeah, be. We want to be with the locals. It's it's almost, uh, it's almost good that we, we took the time we did. So tomorrow we invited JP, this guy who we've talked to for several nights. We actually met him at our, our buddy's 
stand who yeah. it was our first local that we really kind of sat down with mm -hmm. and uh he he tried what it was some chicken entrails yeah and he was like yo you should you, you should, should, should try, try these they're yeah. pretty good so he got some spicy yeah. pork for me he got some chicken entrails yeah. and you got some pork and a, a, a big chicken yeah, breast it's it amazing uh we actually went to this party we had mentioned after you know our bro told us to go to Hirana on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just walking through. We got a drink and we were walking through and JP said, Corey? Yeah, right. <laughs> and we were, we were like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. And then so JP was there with a couple of his buddies. He introduced us uh, to a couple of his friends. Soccer. I kept calling him soccer. But soccer. Soccer, soccer, soccer yeah. from, from India. And, and then he had his buddy Kim, who is Kim, actually Kim. Uh, Filipino but from Sweden. Yeah. which is really cool. And uh, so we have a San Fran Filipino, a Swedish Filipino. I don't know where soccer's from. I'm going to keep Indian, calling them soccer. In, 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 in Indian, but okay. in India, I don't know where from, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we just, we kind of bombed around with them for a little bit. We met uh, Kim's sister. We went to a couple of bars, but it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It, it's been incredible kind of, I don't, I, I, I'm reluctant to use the word assimilate, but like we're trying to just embed ourselves yeah. here. And you know, not take advantage in any ways we can, but like really experience it. And what our next big push is gonna be is, uh, you know, JP knows a, a bit of Tagalog and he's been super generous with his time and he wants to hang out tomorrow. We actually rented a, a Suzuki Jimny mm -hmm. and we're gonna bomb around Shargao. Yeah. And kind of kind of go to some of the smaller places. We wanna go check out some food and, and go to some markets and just kind of see some stuff. We got a little bit of taste of that when we went to some of these skate parks we were bombing around oh, trying yeah, to find. So much fun, and, so much fun. Um, just some spots on Google Maps. Uh, one thing to mention is like stuff on Google Maps not always still here. You were talking about Odette and what we want mm -hmm. to talk about. It was what, 10 months ago, Odette kind of came through Shargao. And it's only been a couple of years in general that it's gotten this lively, but to have a couple of years and then just 10 months ago, Odette came through and just like slammed this place. Yeah, for context, Odette was one of the biggest super typhoons that the world has ever seen. Yeah, it was and it was Hurricane it, Katrina of the it, Philippines. Yeah, and like, it came on them very quickly without much warning and it literally came right through where we're sitting. So, and that just happened back in December. So that was 10 months ago. Yeah. So they're still in a recovery mode and we want to kind of do a, a bit of a deeper dive into that and see how it affected the locals and how it still affects them. Um, but so, I mean, there's, we could sit here and talk for hours about how oh, amazing this place is, absolutely. but I think we should, we should probably cut it off here Sure. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and pick up. And um, I mean, I mean, I think for me, the summary of the first week is, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful, amazing place that's had so many unexpected uh, things happen to me and, and insights and moments of clarity that I just, uh, I, I really want to do a deeper dive as, as we get into things that I think you're kind of feeling. Absolutely, man. So like I have a blog on my, on my webpage that I'll post, but follow us on Instagram, follow us, you know, here, subscribe if you haven't already. And we're, this is, this is spectacular. And uh, if you have been kind of on edge since, you know, the great quarantine, uh, I, I, I truly recommend you get out and, and see some stuff. Cause it's, I mean, we already talked about it so much, but it's like every day perspective is just changing and true. changing and yeah, changing. True. The resilience of the people here to um, bounce back in such a short time and just like provide such a wonderful service to so many people and have this like this island's incredible this yeah, is one nice. of the most spectacular places i've ever been yeah. so no question about it all right man <laughs>